For most of us, spring is pretty much in full effect. I was actually in shorts today, but at the same time, I talked to a customer today uh, for about 40 minutes who was in Montana who woke up to snow. So hopefully, you're feeling a little bit of spring already. Um, and if you're not, or even if you are, uh, we've got something to maybe help Mother Nature along. And today we've got a little tea light uh, it's a, a daffodil is the main little design on the front. I have all my pieces here in front of me. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we've got some vellum here. Now, actually, speaking of that, um, I get a lot of emails um, asking, and I do want to just quickly show you. Um, this is the Dreaming Tree app here. If you open it up, uh, you'll notice once it loads here down at the bottom we have a little supplies section and I've been compiling um, quick links to some of the well some of the things that we use on a daily basis especially things that we get a lot of questions about so if you want that in the palm of your hand uh, visit the App Store for Apple or Android Play uh, or Google Play I think it's called and just do a search for Dreaming Tree and you'll see it, and you'll see here that under basics, under vellum, um, I link to a fineartstore.com. We get these in rolls. We just kind of trim them as necessary. They're big pieces of vellum, um, but of course, you never really use a full sheet, so you can kind of cut, um, cut it to how you need. You can click on the link. It'll take you right to the store. You can see, and they've got um, all these different colors. Uh, should be more than that, but... Anyway, um, this is a handy little tip. Download the app uh, and you'll have that in the palm of your hand. Uh, now, as far as the freebie goes, uh, the first thing we're gonna do, we're actually gonna put the vellum on the front. So this is the, the face, this is the actual um, tea light itself. We're gonna create it, make it dimensional here in a second, but we don't want the vellum showing on the back. We're gonna kinda sandwich it between the front layer and this little overlay. So we're gonna do that. And it's kind of a, a two-toned uh, design here. And you'll notice that, um, well, the leaves, there's two different designs. And you just want to make sure that you get the correct piece of vellum in the correct place. Okay, and that is not correct. This is correct here. And, of course, just make sure that you're covering all of the little cutouts, and we'll get those in place. So uh, typically what I'll do with vellum is I'll just do dots because I don't want, if we do too much, if we do big thick lines, uh, it may kind of spill over and encroach into the non cutaway areas. And now when you're doing this, make sure that with these green pieces, you don't go too low uh, because then the little panel may not cover the vellum up completely okay so just do your best to get it up as high as you can like that and then you can grab the little panel that goes over it to kind of check your work and make sure that none of it's sticking out at the bottom so if you want to be overly cautious maybe put it down before you glue it and then take this panel put it on top and make sure you don't have any of that sticking out at the bottom okay and I am kind of fighting a, a cold so pardon me, and I think it may be cold slash all the fun stuff that's in the air from all the trees and such with spring coming into play here. So hopefully I don't sound too much like a frog, but I'm sure uh, i got a little broth in the works right now, and I'm sure I'll be tip top in no time. So again, just kind of, uh, just use the little dot method here. Just tiny little dots. Try to keep it as close to the cutouts as you can, especially towards the bottom. Okay, so this is our, our bottom layer here. And then of course we've got a separate color for the actual daffodil. And that's gonna be in a nice yellow color. Okay, so we've got our last little part for the leaves and the stem. 
So let's get that in place. I've had a lot of great phone calls this week from our new dreamers and existing dreamers. And I've got a lot of new people turned on to our amazing crafts. And um, this is a cute little project. Okay, so now we just need to glue our, our little daffodil here. Now you may end up overlapping some of the vellum just a little bit and that's okay. Eventually we're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna put our little, well in our case, a pink polka dot panel on top of all this. So it's gonna cover it all up. I'm just, I'm, I'm laying these down right now just to make sure that I'm getting the right ones in place and then we'll glue them down and then we'll throw our panel on there. And uh, before you know it, we'll be done here. It's a pretty simple project. Definitely a good one for our beginners and I'm willing to bet that our seasoned veterans probably won't even need a video for this, but I'm sure that you guys enjoy hanging out with me and I appreciate that. Okay, so get that one on there and you can see that, uh, you know, vellum is kind of, it's, uh, it's strong based on the sum of all the little parts here. So you don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way and I actually prefer that you just use a little bit because Otherwise you'll end up with a huge gluey mess and you don't want that. And that goes for pretty much everything we do. Try to use as little glue as possible. Uh, speaking of flowers in spring, I uh, took a little time yesterday to get some of my seeds started and I threw in some cold weather stuff. I've got my romaine and I've got some kale already in the garden. Well, the seeds. So that's exciting. Did a lot of, uh, gonna do a lot of bush tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, definitely some jalapenos. And of course, some catnip. I have a cat named Pumpkin, which some of you may already know. And when I first got him, he wasn't very fond of the catnip. But I think uh, as he's maturing, he's now, I think he's five, he uh, likes to indulge occasionally. And I'm kind of excited to grow a little patch of it for him and see how that turns out. Okay, so last one here. Again, just make sure as you're laying this down uh, you don't have to worry about getting it on every single little dot that you drop. Just make sure that you're um, covering up all the little cutouts. You don't want anything sticking up. If you do have something sticking up, just go back and just give it an extra dot. Give it a little extra love, push it down, and that's it. Okay, so there is our, and you can see why we didn't do it on the inside, because if we did it on the inside, it would look kind of sloppy. This way, it kind of covers everything up, and we're going to cover it up with these beautiful little panels here, just like that. Okay, and uh, this is pretty straightforward as well. There are some little delicate areas here, so I would probably do those last. Let's kind of get a little bit of a thicker amount of glue in these larger areas. Now this, this pattern on the back here makes it kind of hard to see where my glue is, so I'm gonna try my best to make sure that I'm getting everything covered as nicely as possible. And again, don't glop it on there, especially in those little delicate areas where um, there's a good opportunity for it to kind of splatter out. And I'm kind of focusing on the center of the flower here and using that as my initial guide for placement and then kind of um, going clockwise or counterclockwise with my eyes just to make sure that I've got everything else lined up. You don't want to obstruct any of the beautiful vellum that we're putting down on this. and. Well, that's pretty much it. You know what I might do? Grab my little brayer here and just press down like that with my brayer. Okay, so moving on to the next little piece here. 
again, I'm going to start in the larger areas where I can put on a little bit more, a little bit of a thicker line of glue. And then work my way up to these little nooks and crannies, kind of ease up on the squeeze on the bottle. So not as much comes out and make sure you got the right one. And I'm noticing here that I've got a little bit of excess there and there. I'm just going to wipe that away so it doesn't get all messy here. Focusing on the center of the flower again, and then kind of going either clockwise or counterclockwise with my gaze, just to make sure that I am getting it nice and aligned. Okay, nice and gentle with the brayer. There we go. Okay, well, uh, you get the idea here. If you want, you can kind of skip ahead and get this part finished up. And just fast forward a little bit until you see me start to assemble the actual, uh, well, the structure itself. We've got a cute little base for it too, which we'll put together here in a second. And just from looking at it, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is a DCWV paper. I don't know the exact stack, but I can tell it's a DCWV pattern. Okay, so that one's going to go here again, staring at the center of the flower, aligning it there, and then kind of working counterclockwise with my eyes to make sure that I get it nice and centered and covering the right areas here. Okay, and the last one. So, I'd love to hear what you guys are up to aside from paper crafting this spring. I know I've got a, I've got a few Dreaming Tree pen pals that write to me regularly and I really enjoy talking to them. One of them is my friend Robin and she's, she's a doer, she's constantly doing, 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 I don't know she gardens. She's also doing a bunch of home renovations and uh, always staying busy, which I love to hear. And I don't know how some of you make time for paper crafts, but I think it's awesome. Okay. All right, so that piece is in place. All right, so um, I kind of pre-folded this uh, beforehand, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this little tab here. It's a funky looking tab and that is because we didn't want to um, didn't want to go behind the little vellum here so it's a funky looking tab but it still gets the job done. So let's add our glue to that tab and I'm going to take my finger and spread that right out to the very edge so that when they connect we've got a nice seamless little edge there. And I'm actually flattening it and doing this flat because it's symmetrical and you know perfectly designed and engineered, um, and that will should be able to just glue it on flat like that. And there you go. And then we can flip it over. I'll move this out of the way for a second. We got our three tabs remaining here, and let's get our glue on the main part of the tab, and then I'm going to do one pretty thin line right out to the edge that I'm going to spread out with my finger again to make that look nice and clean there at the bottom. There we go. And there's a little excess there that would have ended up kind of sticking out. All right, so flare these up just a tad so that as we push down, it grabs more of that surface area and focus on aligning the side opposite of where the hinged area is here, where it's already anchored to the paper and get that nice and aligned. The rest of it should pretty much fall into place by default. We can flip it uh, over now. And if you can get your fingers in there, do so. If not, grab a dowel and just push down on those tabs to get an even better um, connection there. And that looks perfect. If you do happen to have any areas that are maybe popping up, um, you can always touch those up by grabbing a scrap piece of paper and just kind of just kind of painting some glue in there, which you've seen me do multiple times, I'm sure. All right, and then throw a little bit of glue into the bottom there. That's what this piece is for. It's our little liner. 
to kind of reinforce the bottom and also hide those tabs. That's going to make it look nice. So you could totally just make it like this, but of course we've got a cute little base that we're going to put together so that we can add a little more color to this and make it look pretty. Okay, so again, I've already kind of folded this. You want to fold everything at the score marks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on one of these tabs. It doesn't matter which side you start on. And I put way too much on that, so I'm going to rub some off and just connect it to the neighboring wall. Make sure that the edges connect nice and even. And just hold that for just a few moments while it sets. Okay. And we'll go over here to the next one. And just bring that over. You can pop this out of the way so that's easier to get your thumb back there and kind of squeeze it like that. I'll hold that in place. And this is uh, this is Doodlebug. This is the, the gingham pattern. Okay, I'll go over here to this side. Get our glue here. We're just constructing a little box, basically. It's uh, probably one of the most easy, fundamental things that we'll do as far as 3D construction goes with Dreaming Tree. So again, uh, a nice little freebie for those of you that are new and definitely um, if you're feeling crafty, but you, you don't have, you know, two, three hours, this is a fun little project. Add a little, add a little ambiance to your spring decor, which I'm slowly getting out of my storage. Okay, so we've got one last tab there. You can see, put the glue on there, get it connected, give it a squeeze, hold that for just a moment. And got all four sides connected and now we just have to close this up so let's get our glue on this tab I'm gonna try to purposely mess this up so I can show you the little painting technique and one little line right across the bottom there so that we can make that nice and smooth here in a second there we go grab that and Spread that right out to the very edge. Beautiful. Okay, so again, just like we did with the actual structure there, flare those out just a tad, press down and align the side opposite of where that hinged area was. Just work on that. And the rest of it should just kind of fall into place. And press down on the corners or on the edges here, opposite of the side that we initially began working on. And I tried to mess that up, but I couldn't. I, I don't, it's kind of a simple piece, so I don't know that you can really mess that up. So there's the base that our little tea light is going to sit on. Really cute. And I'm going to going to add a little bit of a little, a little bit of light green to the edges of this thing, just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. So uh, I've got my little felt applicator. Got my little, uh, got my ink on there, and I'm just gonna graze the surface of this while I'm hitting the edge. I might need a little more than that. And it's kind of going to, uh, well. Got a lot, we got some yellow and green on the actual structure, so this kind of just plays plays with that. Adds a little continuity to the entire piece here. Okay, I'll do I'll do the edges too here, and then I might as well do the bottom. So once this is done, it's just a matter of putting a little bit of glue on the main structure here, and then gluing it to our little platform, our base whatever you want to call it. Oh, actually, you know what? There you go. You can see it's kind of, see how it's kind of lifted up right there? Uh, let me see if I have a scrap piece of paper here. I'll show you. I've done this a million times. So for those of you that have seen this, you can skip ahead. But for those of you that are new, if you mess up, just grab a scrap piece of paper, throw a little glue on the end of it, on one of the corners even, and flatten it out a bit. And you can literally just kind of tuck it in there into that loose area 
paint a little bit of glue into that section and just press and hold that down for just a moment and let it set. Okay, that way you don't see that. Okay, now I think probably, usually, I think it's because this is, uh, the colors are so similar that I don't even think I need my ink pad. I think the ink pad is just taking a lot longer to get the effect I'm looking for. So I'm just hitting it straight off the pad here. There we go. I'll just hit the edges here. So you can take and get our glue on the bottom of our structure here. And it's okay if you go a little heavy on this, it's two layers. And of course we want it to really take and not go anywhere. And then you can stand up and kind of just do an eagle eye view. Make sure that you get it centered. There's a uh, really nothing special to this other than just making sure that you've got it centered and then either hold it. Um, I would probably hold it from all four sides, just making sure that you're, you're getting good contact all the way around. And um, that's really it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, just put a little electronic tea light in here. You don't want to put a real candle in here, obviously, because it's paper. It'll burn your house down and we don't want that. So as always, if you enjoyed crafting with me, go ahead and, and hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. That lets me know that, um, well, you love hanging out and crafting with me. And if you do make this or any of our projects, um, join myself and the 10,000 plus dreamers in the official Dreaming Tree group on Facebook. So head over to your Facebook, do a search for Dreaming Tree group, and um, we'd love to see what you're up to lately. And I do also wanna take a moment to thank my amazing team our art director, Ron Gutman, and um, Diana Tam for um, her impeccable engineering skills, as I've mentioned in the past. So thank you guys, and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. For Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.